Jimmy, thanks for joining us, man. Oh, appreciate you having me on. Jimmy, uh, I hadn't been able to talk to you in depth, probably not as much as I'd like since the game, but what, what struck me, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough, I'm on the sidelines uh, at, the, at the conclusion of most games, and, and I remember thinking after the Florida State game that, wow, this fan base, they almost kind of yawned after the Florida State game, like almost they had become so um, kind of oblivious to what it meant to win a game like that. But it was the exact opposite Monday night. I thought this fan base was jubilant. And because, in, in my opinion, it's because I don't think the fan base saw that performance coming. I'm not saying Alabama fans didn't expect to win, but I don't think they expected to blow out Clemson. I think there was more negativity than normal. I mean, for – for Alabama, you know, Alabama's been favored. I think I, I'd, I'd read uh, a tweet from maybe Peter Burns at SEC Network uh, that Alabama had been favored in uh, 110 of their last 111 games, which sounds made up. That sounds like a cartoon. That doesn't sound like real life. But but <laughs> per Peter Burns, it is real life, and uh, Alabama's been favored to win. That's, that's multiple, multiple, multiple seasons of being favored to win every week, no matter the circumstance. Other than one time, and by the way, in the game that Alabama was not favored, they won by 28 points at Athens, Georgia, ironically. Um, so I think even though Alabama was a Vegas favorite, it never felt at any point like Alabama was the favorite to win the game. The majority, and I mean a clear majority, of pundits in the national media picked Clemson to win. The game day guys picked Clemson to win. I've never seen this many Alabama fans predict the other team to win the game. Uh, normally, you just never really see Alabama fans doing that, but they they did this time around. And I think for all of those reasons, uh, the win, a win of any kind, was I don't know if unexpected is the right word, but a uh, a fun a fun outcome. And then throw in that that Alabama won the game easily, not having to sweat out the fourth quarter whatsoever. Uh, added up to some uh, quite a bit of jubilation for Alabama for for Alabama fans everything's relative. Jimmy, I'm I'm probably in the minority on this and I look a little deeper than maybe the casual fan does, but I, I thought Brian Dable play uh, called a great game considering the opponent, considering the limitations of what they have in the passing game that I think is pretty clear to everyone at this point. And by the way, they didn't have to throw the ball down the field. It would have been great it would have been probably more efficient on offense, but they won 24-6 to six with the game plan that he called, and I know the defense certainly helped out in that, no question. But I don't know how successful Alabama is if they drop back and throw the ball 40 times down the game and they're throwing it on first and second down all the time. I thought he called a game plan where they kept themselves on schedule for to convert and be successful on third down. I think he called a lot of short, uh, quick slants to receivers, swing passes to running backs, uh, even – uh, the one kind of shot he took was the flea flicker, which was wide open. So um, a lot of he's been under a fair amount of criticism the last month, but I thought Brian Dable called a great game plan versus Clemson. You know, a college coach told me one time, a college coach who's a play caller, told me one time that despite the fact that he had had a history of scoring 40 points per week, and racking up four to five hundred yards of offense every week. Uh, that his one of his goals, one of his mindsets uh, when he calls plays, or maybe his number one mindset is: Look, you know, this is how this is how I call the plays on Sunday morning when there is a a full staff meeting. I'd never want to hear the words, "Well, we had the game won. We had the game won until." Until Bob screwed, until Bob screwed it up, you know. In other words, the offensive coordinator doesn't want to be the guy Sunday morning that uh, that that lost the uh, the unlosable game. Um, and I think once the defense showed up like it did, once the score got to where it was, once Alabama was very comfortable with the idea that Clemson was not going to be driving length, down the length of the field scoring touchdowns. Uh, the game, the game plan changes a little bit, or the, the calls change a little bit. There's no reason to risk uh, to risk big plays going the other way. Uh, the defense was winning the game. The running game was winning the game. Uh, 
Uh, well, we've heard Nick Saban say before in the past, Aaron, you know, a, a, an offensive drive is successful when it ends with a kick. Uh, whether that's an extra point, whether it's a field goal attempt, or, or, or whether it's a punt, uh, that, that's a win. And, 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 and that's what Alabama did. That's what Alabama does. I, I don't know what the identity of the team is. I think sometimes we can get a little lost in details there. But the identity of Nick Saban's Alabama is, you know, they win every week. They win every week. It doesn't matter the opponent or the place or the Vegas line or whether Alabama lost to the same team the year before. Most weeks, almost every week, Alabama wins. That's that's the identity. Yeah, and, and again, I, I'll just go back to that. I thought they – Called a great game plan. I talked to Burton Burns in the locker room, Jimmy, after the games, and I, and I asked him about why were you so much better on third down, and, and I, I kind of prefaced it with what I saw from my layman's perspective is you ran the ball. And and he said, listen, we knew we were going to run the ball, and we knew that two or three yards was going to be a good run, and that we knew that, and that was okay. And that just uh, kept them um, you know, more on schedule and, and, and able to avoid a lot of those negative plays. Um of course, we're talking about the 2017 season. It's the year of the injury, and of course, uh, you know, with an 18-point lead at the end of the game, you know, you're trying to prevent Clemson to score. Unfortunately, Anthony Jennings uh, lost for uh, the national championship game. Had a great game, Jimmy, and I, I don't know that they have another Anthony Jennings. They have pass rushers, but I don't know that they have a guy that sets the edge like number 33. What a loss for this defense. It's a big loss, particularly when you're talking about an opponent uh, that runs the ball 70% of the time. If, if, if Anthony had not gotten hurt, even without his spectacular performance against Clemson, and it was spectacular, even without that, if you'd ask me before the Georgia game, of the 11 guys on the field, who's the most valuable defender for Alabama, I would tell you it's Anthony James because he is an, an, an a defense Full of talented guys stopping the run. He's the best. He's the best suited guy uh, to to slow down a running attack that is basically the Georgia offense. And uh, what a crushing loss for Alabama's defense. On the other hand, what else did we expect? Of course, Alabama would lose another linebacker. Of course, uh, we probably should have. You know, you, uh, you you beat writers probably could have written that story before the game started. <laughs> you know, uh, is Alabama? You know, at least the headline of the first paragraph. Uh, you know that Alabama's lost another starting linebacker for a significant game. So it is a loss. Alabama does have some some pieces there. Thankfully, you know, all in November the talk was is Torrell Lewis and Christian Miller coming back, and 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 they finally did for Auburn and. And now they're, they're both needed more than ever because Alabama's going to have to play some of the deeper depth on an outside linebacker. And while Terrell and Christian are primarily pass rushers, hey, this is a great opportunity, particularly for Terrell Lewis. You know, what I, what I would tell the kid is, look, you know, he's going into what you might call his contract year next season. He's going to be labeled a third-down pass rusher like a Tim Williams was. One of the reasons maybe Tim didn't go as high in the draft as he would have liked, is because he was seen as a third-down only player. This is a great opportunity for Terrell to prove that he's beyond that, that he's more than that. He's not just a third-down player. He's an everyday linebacker. So it's a heck of a challenge for him. Uh, and, and it's, But it, to me, it's the obvious personnel move. Let's, let's let Terrell Lewis prove he's an everyday linebacker. Jimmy, did you, you know? Quite frankly, let's just go ahead and ask you: Did you see this defensive performance coming, and, and what do you mark it up to? I mean, we haven't. I, I said at my immediate kind of feeling and the emotions after the game was that I hadn't seen that Alabama defense since Florida State. Nick Saban said he hadn't seen a ferocious effort like that from an Alabama defense. He he compared it pretty favorably to the to the national championship game against LSU. Uh, just simply put, where did this effort come from? I think there was more passion and more emotion uh, as it related to feeling disrespected that entire 30 days of first, 30 days of hearing everyone on ESPN pick the other team, 30 days of hearing the Clemson's defensive line was the best unit on the field, a year to let the, the, the loss, you know, this defense that gave up three touchdown drives to Clemson in the final quarter of the national championship game a year ago. I think it just welled up and bubbled up and we saw 60 minutes of, a very passionate, intense defensive effort. 
that's coupled with a lot of talent. While, no, I didn't see this coming. I didn't see Alabama holding Clemson to 188 yards and no touchdowns. I, I, I didn't see that coming. But we are talking about a defense that after 12 games was second in the nation in, in, in total defense, number one in scoring defense. It wasn't like it, wasn't like it was out of the question that, that, that Alabama uh, was capable of this. I, I think basically it was a highly capable group playing its best game. Uh, but it didn't really come out of nowhere. This defense had been good all year. I don't know why. I can't put my finger on this. I guess it's just the years of sustained excellence. When Alabama did finish number one in scoring defense, number two in total defense after the regular season, I still got the sense from the fan base, Aaron, that 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 the defense that we just thought of the defense as average. You know, well, you know, they're not they're not that good. They're not as good as they were. They're not that good. We we didn't have a tough schedule. We didn't play a lot of great offenses. All these reasons as to why the defense wasn't great. But look, you, you don't finish number one in the nation in scoring defense, number two in total defense if you aren't very, very good. And the fact is Alabama was very good every week uh, with maybe the exception of, of the one game at Auburn. And, uh, and while we didn't see this coming, Aaron, maybe we should have. Yeah, and, and I'll say, you know, talking to enough of those guys – uh, after after the game, they they really, whether it's real or fabricated, felt disrespected um, because um, you know as you mentioned, a lot of people, especially national pundits, uh, were favoring Clemson in this matchup. Looking ahead, Jimmy, how does Alabama match up against Georgia? You know, so much tension is going to be, so much attention is going to be play, uh, paid to Nick Saban and Kirby Smart. But like Nick Saban often says, this isn't really a, a deal for the coaches. This is this is the players. Uh, the coaches will put the players in position, but this is about the players on the field. How does Alabama match up with Georgia? Yeah, I think the Saban Kirby Smart angle is going to just probably bore me. I, 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 I don't think it has anything at all to do. It might be an interesting storyline to go with some others, but it, it doesn't matter. I, you know, One of my favorite uh, Bear Bryant quotes, and there's so many, but one of my favorite Bear Bryant quotes was from the the Sugar Bowl game uh, in the lead-up to playing Arkansas in the 79 Sugar Bowl when Alabama won its final national title under Coach Bryant. Arkansas was coached by a very young Lou Holtz, who was climbing the coaching ranks and impressing everyone, but uh, it was quite the contrast with the much older established Bear Bryant against the young up-and-coming Lou Holtz. And uh, that storyline was played up a lot by the media at the time, old versus young, and and Coach Bryant was asked about it, and he said, look, you know, the game's not going to be decided by me and Lou Holtz. It's going to be decided by the players. He said, and I'm not playing in the game, and I hope Lou does. And that's that's the, the way I feel about this. Is Nick and Kirby aren't playing, and gosh, if they do, I hope Kirby does. Remember uh, remember, Alabama had some success beating Kirby Smart on the, on the field when he played for Georgia. Uh so let's hope we see him out there again this Saturday, uh, Monday. It, it, it will have nothing to do with the outcome. I think what this outcome is going to be about running the football. These are two teams that want to run the ball. These are two teams, frankly, that have to run the ball to have success. And one of the two will run it better than the other, and that team will win the game. Gut feeling, Jimmy. Who wins? Who wins the uh, national championship? I think Alabama's going to win. I just don't think the game is going to look like Clemson. Uh, I will be really, really surprised. Of course, I didn't pick Alabama to beat Clemson 24-26. I said 24-21. I think this will be even lower scoring uh, than what we saw in New Orleans. It will certainly be lower scoring than what happened out at the Rose Bowl uh, in the Georgia-Oklahoma game. I think it will be very tight. Neither team... Both teams trying very hard to not let their young quarterbacks lose the game. It's going to be a lot of three and outs, and a lot of the country might get bored and turn it off. But Alabama fans won't be bored, and Georgia fans won't be bored, because they'll probably be hanging on until the very end of what's going to be a tight, low-scoring game. I think Alabama wins something like 14-10. to 10. Probably what I'm thinking there, fourteen ten. 